human resources and its productivity. So HR managers, managers take more rational decision because of uh, HR analytics. It is needless to explain. Uh, we all at this level understand that you know, if data is there and through data we have information, we are able to take right decisions at the right time. That is the core function of HR analytics to the HR managers. So HR analytics uh, is also to understand organization's performance rating and composition. So uh, there are levels of uh, uh, levels like level four is productive analysis, level three strategic analysis, level two proactive advanced reporting, and level three operational re reporting. So as we go uh, down to up, it is more broader in nature uh, than uh, operational. So HR analytics and human resource management, how the two combine. The main goal of SHRM is to connect and support the strategic objective of organization with the help of human capital to increase effectiveness and profitability of the organization. Uh, HR analytics in a structured way uh, derives completely manpower handling in a better manner. So it, you know, it, all, it all revolves uh, uh, around how to make the manpower more effective, more productive, more optimized. So it is basically ensure success by making them more optimized growth and efficiency of the organization. So some facts and figure Deloitte press report 2015, it says that global human capital trend commented that HR losing the pace with the development in the industry. So to keep pace with the development in the industry, HR need to uh, uh, run up and catch up with the other trend. It is also stated that there is a gap between human resource professionals and industry expectations. So therefore, organizations with HR analytical tool protocol are growing and also show the potential in HR branding, HR consulting, and human resource management. So this is uh, HR analytics in a way helps uh, HR managers to develop and catch up with the modern trends in the industry. So survey by MIT and IBM reported that following strategic with a high level of HR analytics, which gives 8% of higher sales growth, 24% higher net operating income, and 58% of high sales uh, per employee. So that is the outcome of uh, employment of uh, HR analytics in the organization, that growth sales in net operating income and high sales per employee. So HR analytics and strategic very content specific. It varies uh, from industry to industry and it helps understand and improve the HR practices and policies. It also helps to accelerate profitability with rational business. So that is the purpose of HR analytics. So application of HR analytics, identification and managing critical ta talent. So that is a process that goes along. Then the critical uh, workforce is segmented then predicting employee behavior and preferences, how he's likely, the, the employee is likely to act or behave in a certain situation. Hey, Dr. Kumar, uh, sorry for interrupting you. Developing yeah. higher practices to attract and retain talent. So talent, uh, attracting the right talent is also a part of HR analytics. That is how the, the right talent is converted into right uh, output. And business forecasting and staffing requirements and adopting to change in business environment. So matrix, uh, how, how we measure it, workforce statistics, ratios, financial ratios related to people and productivity, measuring people value and engagement, efficiency of HR function, efficient, efficient effectiveness of people and processes. So, so these are the ways that you can measure the effectiveness of HR analytics in uh, organizations. Factors affecting HR analytics. So these are the factors which are bearing on the uh, effectiveness of HR analytics that the, if the environment is competitive, uh, it will result into more productivity. Uh, institutional mechanism, organizational structure, configuration, labor capital rate, financial health, innovation, uh, orientation and size of organization will have bearing on uh, HR analytics in any organization. So, like there are facilitators to HR analytics, there are barriers to, like if the quality of data is not good, obviously the outcome would not be good. 
and so are the sources of data you have to go to the right person or to have right input of data so that you get the right output of data uh, to act upon absence of standard methodology in data collection so the the way to collect data the process of collecting data methodology to collecting data to collect data must be uh, right so that you collect the right data there could be a skill gaps uh, in the uh, skills required and the skill uh, uh, honed by the uh, by the employee that could lead to uh, barriers to hr analytics and lack of skilled human resources human resources at the company's end so so in conclusion we can say that hr analytics considered as best evidence based technique so evidence because there is a it relies on data so it improves performance of individuals and thus organizations uh, by making uh, rational decisions it also provides guidelines to improve the hr practices it also helps professionals required to develop new skill set and cap capabilities hr analytics can reduce the challenges faced by organizations by providing sophisticated tools and techniques it can be used as connection between effective profitable management and employee development and hr analytics uh, provides capability to view the hr data from hr data warehouses to address various issues so with this we come to the end of i think okay. that time uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh, um, Doctor, I think you presented as uh, Omar, right? Um, thank you again for your uh, imperative uh, and informative, you know, presentation. I would like just to take three minutes for discussion. Uh, three questions, okay? Within five minutes to finish. Shall we start with the Q and A? Okay, there are uh, very, you know, um, important questions from the audience. What kind of competency is needed for HR professional to implement the result derived from HR actually, analytics? Okay. I'm actually just, I'll take down the question from the audience, but uh, I'm not able to listen to you properly. Maybe some problem at my side. Hello? Uh, yeah, yeah, your voice, your voice. Yeah, can you hear me now? Not very clear, but I can try, it, Doctor. Okay, I will. I will. Um, I will. You know, uh, speak you know, slowly in order maybe to listen to the question very well because maybe the internet uh, connection your side is not that much. Maybe uh, I'm sorry, it. I'm not able to uh, listen properly. So we'll take it later. Also, I can take the questions later after this because I don't want to while away time of the other panelists. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Thank you uh, very much. We will, you know, regarding to the, this important uh, topic in uh, you, doctor. analytics, it is very important to, we will also contact you for more clarifications and we, our, you know, we can send you now the questions and then you can just type in, you can answer the questions uh, just type in Q and a Our team will uh, contact you for, in this regard. Okay, um, uh, thank you, Dr. Amar, for your nice presentation. Now let's move on the, uh, to the second presentation of the of this session. I would like to introduce Dr. Hisham Zakaria Muhammad with warm regards. Dr. Zakaria, are you ready? Dr. Hisham, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Dr. Hisham is a lecturer and accountant at Hawaii University in Egypt. He graduated from the Faculty of Commerce in 2002, Accounting Division, and obtained a master's degree in Management and Course Accounting in 2013, and a doctorate in International Tax and Accounting in 2020. Uh, Dr. Hisham research interest lie in uh, financial accounting, auditing, management, accounting, cost account, uh, accounting, accounting information system, government and national accounting, general accounting, and international uh, tax accounting. Dr. Hisham has many research papers in, in, uh, in various research and various journals. Dr. Hisham has, has also participated in many international conferences and workshops. Um, let us welcome Dr. Hisham uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad to the session. You will get 10 minutes for a presentation and another five minutes for discussion. Okay, so we will take 
maximum three questions. Hope you are ready to share your screen and the floor is yours, Dr. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Dear colleague, I am blessed to and honored to participate in this conference. Firstly, I want to thank the Gulf University, University Dr. Mahmoud Mohanad and Dr. Sharif and Dr. Tamir and Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you for your this chance. Second, I apologize because I have a technical problem with laptop camera. So let me join with, with you to present my research paper through the PowerPoint file. Fine, uh, no problem, Doctor. Okay. Okay, you can start, okay. Okay. A research paper includes the, ro the role of managerial accounting in evaluating human resource strategy in educational organization. Prepared by me, Sham Zakari. Introduction, the human, the human elementary in any organization represented the effective role in the success and the potential in the market so that interested in it is a considered competitive strategy that business organizations seek to use in achieving goals. Even if, if the educational organizations are the most interested and demanded to develop their human resource for what it's reflected in the quality of their educational service. And for this strategy is achieved by relating on the accounting to provide information on who to design, implement, evaluate, and follow up the it's a human resource strategy. Hi, bosses. Research importance, it is represented and explain the concepts of human resource strategy, variables and the factors affected it and the role of managerial accounting and and the method it contains in stating the impact of interested in evaluating the human resource strategy in educational organization in achieving their main objective. That represented and independent strategy that the organization seeks in, team, in terms of quality, cost, and decision. Hi, bosses. There is relationship between the human resource strategy and the development and improvement of the quality of the educational process. To managerial account achieves the ability to deal with several competitive strategy with conflict, without conflict. Three, there is a conflict between the organization requirement for indicators and measures for evaluating the organization performance and the human resource strategy. Research objective, definition and importance of the human research, human resource strategy and the factors affected. Explain the role management, managerial accounting in evaluating the human resource strategy in educational organization. The first site, what is the human resource strategy? Definition of it is organization plan to mend in its human resource and utilize them in manner that achieves the goals of the organization as well as its material part of the organization basic strategy. It is it's a, a long term plan because it includes part practice and policies so with the organization deals with the potential of the human elementary in the future work. Sub strategic emerge for its such as a strategy for training, employee performance, development, and the contents improvement. Importance this human uh, human resource strategy it's considered the link between the goals 
of the organization and the rule and the rule and the structure follow the, at the work as the human elementary applied the rules in order to reach or reach the goals. To the human resources strategy is not intended to increase the number of the human competent components in the system, but rather to increase the level of knowledge and learning and improve performance in variety of way. Educa educational organization depend on human resource, <clears throat> human resource through the inputs and processes and outputs of the educational processes so that human resource strategy is not secondary in this organization but rather is fundamental and should be taken care of. Three factories affect human resource strategy. Educational organizations are affected by many factors that affect the human resources strategy as number A, economic factors. When economic factor, they have a fundamental role in terms of inflicting the management style of educational organization to achieve competitive capability terms of quality. Number B, technology factors have contributed to reducing the role of the human element in business. And this is evident in what the world witness of increases in reliance on this issue. Number C, social and cultural factors affected educational organization in terms of directing the human element to specific educational organization beside on what is reflected in the social culture of this organization. The political, political and legal factors, each of them has an impact on the human element in terms of the contemporary and goals of this organization and the educational service they provide, provide in line with the legal or and political requirements. The method managerial account. Managerial, managerial account includes many methods to the methods that support to the achieves of the human resources strategy for educational organization. Number one, the balance score balance score balance score works and on transferring and communication in the its strategy to the world's administration level to measure how the strategy is implemented to achieve it, the target results and support the competitive position of the organization and compare the actual and target results of according to the that tool. <clears throat> the benchmark method experience interested in find and implemented in best practice for the organization operation through exterior compared with sublized and design this strategy. Number three, the actuality evaluation method is beside on it as one of the modern methods on, of managerial account. In this way, it achieved the work of a blank budget for each human resource or a map of the human resource of the organization through which it explained classification of human capacity and the acceptance of their explosion in the future. Number four, an activity beside management style is effective, effective in achieve control or of actions that included define the organization objective such as classifying and blame and analyze actual activities and show that based of those activities. 
and what has been achieved in addition of to the value the organization with the exclusion of, of the letter. Number five, six sigma model decide on the use of information and the factors to reach better solution and results by design and monitoring day-to-day -day business activities so that was an resource concern that helped to uh, evaluate the uh, human resource strategy. Managerial accounting standards for evaluating human resource strategy. You can use it as some standard to uh, evaluate the human resource strategy. Number one, standard of reduce the cost of this of the service provided by the human element is education equalization through that optimal exclusion of human resource and results and expenditure. Number two, standard of service quality. As that skill and experience of the human competent in educational organization is reflected in the quality of the educational product or service, even if it requires improvement and development and continue training of the human competent. Number three, the standard focus on a specific category that in organization provides to certain that make, make mix between the provides uh, standards to uh, to help uh, the organization make human men planning budgets and to determine determine it is future needs and provide its cost and expenses the financial areas criteria represented is when the visibility of marketing for the service of educational organization, financial and operating and research. The inventory, the environment and the social responsibility standard as educational organization uses that capacity of managerial account to link the interior and exterior business environment and community participation in its inventory and social goals. Number six, information system standard, which determine the visibility and of administration decision in educational organization. Without information, the decision loss its value and the visibility of visibility of its application. This is what Dr. Dr. Hisham, we are running the time. We are can, could you please just in two minutes try to finalize? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. The results. Okay. There is a difference between the strategy and the strategic vision in that the first is what the organization seeks to achieve, while the second is what has been stable to apply. And this doesn't not apply to the human resource strategy, which is considered a vision and strategy. To the inventory variables, sure so the organization have affected the form of modern competitive strategy. Marketing age human resources at most important of this competitive strategy in global education organization. Three, the design of human resource strategy according to financial accounting is not a to predict the important convention as it requires the necessary to rely on managerial accounting methods in evaluating the implementation of follow-up of the strategy in order for educational organization to continue provide their service with the target quality. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud, and thank you, all colleagues.
Thank you, Dr. Hisham, for the wonderful presentation. Um, the findings are patent and indeed it is really very uh, wonderful. Um, I received a few interesting questions uh, from the participant. Okay, we will uh, like, what are the most useful methods in, of, of human resource accounting implementing in the academic institution? If you have a clear idea about it, the most useful methods of HR accounting implementing in academic institutions. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'll apply this uh, study in Hilwan uh, University, okay, to collect okay. it. Okay, complete it. Hello. Again, again. I applied this study in Helwan University okay, to provide, uh, to uh, collect the information about the, how human resource uh, achieves the goals of uh, the organization, okay, educational organization. Uh, when I depend on the, in, uh, depend on the in, uh, managerial account, determine uh, the methods of uh, uh, Six Sigma and uh, branch marketing that help to uh, provide more information about that. Okay, good. Uh, how uh, uh, Six Sigma model support the HR strategy? Uh, uh, six Sigma uh, put uh, the, the goals, okay, when I need it to achieve it. For that, I... Hello? Hello, yes, yes, I hear you. Yeah, Dr. Risham, you can continue, yes, we can hear you. Hello? Dr. Hisham? Yes? Yes. yes. Maybe I have the problem in the, in the, in the voice. Okay. Okay. So shall we, have, uh, sh sh shall we have another question, Dr. Hisham? No? Yes, that's Mr. Mahmoud. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, okay, okay. Okay, uh, you mentioned uh, one of the questions from uh, Dr. Adnan Samurai. He said, in according to some finding you mentioned in your interested paper, does it mean that HR are losing its importance level? in organization, meaning that the, the contribution of uh, a child you know, among your study is not that much contribution in the finding the So we asking that your finding in your study mentioned um, that um, the child losing its importance level in organization. So what do you think based on your study? Hello? Sham? Hello? 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 Dr. Hisham? Okay, I think Dr. Hisham is disconnected right now. Okay, so we're... Uh, let us um, thank Dr. Hisham Zakaria Mohammed for his presentation. Okay, we will move to uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Prof. Sonita. Okay. Prof. Sonita Sharma, are you with us? Yes, sir. Okay. So Dr. Uh, Sharma is uh, Associate Professor in Human Resource Management and Organizational Behavior at Faculty of Management Studies, University of uh, Baroda. She obtained her PhD in uh, corporate uh, governance in India from Faculty of Management Studies, University of Paroda, and obtained Master of Personal, uh, Personnel Management from Faculty of Management Studies, University of Paroda. She got her PhD in, uh, uh, in 
zoology, physics, and chemistry. Dr. Sanita Sharma has an extensive experience, uh, extensive working experience. She has total work experience of 30 years, five years in industry and advocate, and 25 years at FMS and MSU Bidor Dara since February 1995. Dr. Sunita Sharma is teaching many subjects such as advanced personnel management, industrial relation and labor legislation, HR research methods, management concept, and organizational behavior. Dr. Sanita Sharma is member and Senate member at the MSU, core committee members of women's grievance from a committee of the university, and also at the faculty board of studies, and member also at faculty board member at FMS and MSU, central vigilance uh, com uh, committee member at MSU, core committee member of the uh, directorate Students Welfare Fund, MSU, Doctoral Research Committee member at MSU, Core Committee member of Office of International Affairs, MSU. Also, she is a member in HDR and ISTD Indian Commerce Association, SHRB, HR, uh, Millstone Associate member in IOD on Editorial Board of Two Journals. Her research areas are covered governments. Uh, human resource management and general uh, management. She published uh, uh, two, book uh, two books, uh, Corporate Governance in India, and also ABC of Corporate Governance. Well, she has also published more than 25 pa uh, papers in national and international journals, and presented four field presentations at state, national, and international seminars and conference. Moreover, she published a newspaper article further. She is guiding and supervising research uh, for uh, PhD scholars in multidisciplinary subjects that include sustainability and charm, corporate uh, uh, governance and responsible uh, business. Also guided MBA students in tension projects on HRM, OB, IR, and uh, TU, advanced also personal management, marketing, finance, and operations. Warm more welcome to Dr. Sonita Sharma, to the session. You will have 10 minutes to present, followed by five minutes for the discussion uh, session. Hope you are ready and share your screen. The floor is yours, uh, Doctor. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Share your screen, please. I'm sharing. I'm sharing. Yeah, start now, okay. Is, is my screen visible? Yes, it is visible right now. Okay, you just okay. make it full screen. Yes. Or to the Torshama, okay, wishing you all the best within five minutes. Uh, my paper. Minutes, Hello, my paper is on a study of attitude of junior and senior level executive towards reverse mentoring at an Indian city of Vadodara. Uh, introduction part says that training from junior employees to senior employees is termed as reverse mentoring. If mentoring is top to bottom approach, it is just the reverse for reverse mentoring. Reverse mentoring is a career development practice that helps business mind certain insights or information of less experienced, often young employees for senior executives. There is a realization within organizations that most senior executives or employees lack the necessary information, technology, and social media application knowledge and skills. In most of the cases, reverse mentoring seems all about focus on technology, social media, productive use of internet, etc. But in some cases, it is also about senior employees adopting something of their younger mentors' attitude and approach. The present paper tries to explore attitude of junior and senior executive level employees towards reverse mentoring so as to find the issues and challenges of reverse mentoring in the city of Vadodara, state of Gujarat, India. My review of literature has uh, covered the uh, four aspects that is mentoring and reverse mentoring definitions. 
mentoring and reverse mentoring process subjects and fields of reverse mentoring and need and importance of reverse mentoring research methodology under that the objective of this study is main objective of this study is to identify attitude of executives at junior level that is millennials and senior level older generations than millennials that is generation x and baby boomers towards reverse mentoring the purpose of the study is that millennials that is born uh, early 80s and late 90s uh, generation x and baby boomers uh, have different orientation towards their technological know how reason people have started considering learning new trades of business as their first and last resort to catch up with millennials and their attitudes behaviors and preferences hence the teaching will come from the one who are expert that is millennials and to those who seek new knowledge that is generation x and baby boomers who are comparatively at higher positions such learning and development is possible through mentoring youngsters teaching elders may be in relation or position is thought as unacceptable proposition normally at least in india uh, therefore it was required to be understood the attitudes of senior and junior executives towards reverse mentoring concept and practices in indian companies hence the problem of the study is what is the attitude of junior that is millennial employees and the senior executives the data source and sample primary data was collected through e questionnaire by convenient sampling method thus 54 respondents participated in the survey google form was spread across uh, appropriate social media platforms questionnaire comprising of questions for both junior and senior level executives were separate however secondary data was collected through websites books and journals research design was descriptive data analysis was done using simple frequency distribution and percentages uh, these are the demographic data of respondent uh, covering uh, the gender the position of respondent age age group uh, educational qualification sector designation of respondent salary range etc uh, these uh, demographic data was also tried to be used to, uh, to explore various association uh, later on i will uh, come on that analysis of responses uh, attitude of first senior executives towards reverse mentoring so the first half is about senior executives attitude and uh, a b part will be attitude of the junior executives organizations having reverse mentoring program out of 22 senior executives uh, 22.73% admitted that their organizations do have reverse mentoring programs uh, 77% replied in negative so um, uh, most of the companies they don't have the reverse mentoring program uh, formally process of conducting reverse mentoring was online idea sharing uh, maximum it was one to one meeting between junior and senior daily exchange of ideas and discussions during company meetings preferred subject of learning were use of new technology in conventional work new tools and new theories current trend of work and use of social media topics other than technological competencies were preferred work workforce diversity uh, nowadays that lgbt community is also there uh, inclusive hr we are talking about so workforce diversity uh, that uh, the seniors wanted to know work life balance knowledge sharing other than conventional information and leadership development comfort level of senior executives with their juniors were uh, between 4 and 5 uh, as uh, seven uh, almost 77% uh, people uh, said that uh, their comfort level is quite high hesitation of senior executives in asking for help from junior executive uh very less that is around one fourth of people said that they are hesitant otherwise most uh, majority of them said that no they are not hesitant uh, but still there were 18% people who said that they are not uh, um, they can't say that whether they are hesitant or not so opinion of senior executives on periodicity uh, as and when required that was the most preferred one that uh, the mentoring should be done as and when required and they were uh, not in favor of uh, regular uh, mentoring by the uh, juniors possible barriers of reverse mentoring uh, inferiority complex uh, was and power distance 
these were the two major uh, responses which the senior executives said that these are the possible barriers attitude of junior executives uh, this is a part b uh, want to have reverse mentoring program in your organization majority of them said yes they want to have only one person said that no i don't want to have it in my organization and rest one had already had in uh, his organization junior ever mentored their senior executive uh, 25% said yes and 75% said no topic on which junior executives either mentored or would like to mentor the majority of them said that use of new technology in conventional work and use of social media these were the two most preferred um, uh, subjects relationship of junior executives with their senior they said it was again between 4 uh, and 5 most of them had uh, uh, selected four and uh, second uh, one was uh, excellent that is five so overall it was around uh, 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 more than 80% uh, more than 80% percent people were uh, in a very good uh, relationship uh, comfort level of juniors with their seniors for reverse mentoring uh, as far as that is concerned again there was quite positive and uh, as far as 75% were having high to highest comfortable level opinion of junior executives on periodicity again over here as and when required was the most preferred one uh, most preferred option by the juniors uh, juniors opinion on providing reverse mentoring on the topics other than technological knowledge sharing other than conventional information leadership development now leadership development uh, they selected the junior selected but it was the last option for the senior members a uh, skill and competency enhancement workforce diversity daily work work life balance now work life balance is the last one uh, in uh, for the juniors but uh, uh, for the senior executives this one was also one of the preferred area where they wanted uh, the reverse mentoring done level of involvement of junior executives with the senior executives in decision making uh, most of them have sufficiently involved in the decision making and the second number was uh, little involved so there was a mediocrity and uh, very much in involved was uh, very less and not at all was uh, very very meager so there was a possibility of involvement uh, in decision making of the junior uh, executives untapped potential when asked junior executives said that their companies could not uh, use their potential in networking skills and creativity those were the two most uh, untapped potentials uh, which uh, they felt and technical skill used in your past work uh, that was the third one and technological skill uh, only nine people said that nine percent is said that uh, their technological skills are untapped so i think that most of uh, the youngsters uh, their technological know how is used by the organization the most uh, Uh, possible barriers for successful reverse mentoring program inferiority complex by seniors again uh, these three are uh, going neck to neck seniors personal relationship with juniors and power distance now as far as the seniors were concerned inferiority complex and power distance were also going hand in hand now these are the finding reverse mentoring was present in approximately one out of four respondent companies majority of senior level executive possess decent relationship with their juniors and are comfortable mentored by them both junior and senior level executives agree that seniors need to be mentored only when required and not at regular period possible barriers that can be generated through reverse mentoring according to majority are inferiority complex power distance and personal relationship most senior level executives would like to learn ways of using new technology in conventional work and stay updated about the new tools Uh, or theories and the current trends from the junior level executives apart from technological competency seniors would like to know new generations perspective about to work life balance and workforce diversity majority of the junior level executives think that their seniors need to learn use of new technology in conventional work the limitation of the study was that uh, uh, it was uh, uh, carried out to find out the attitude of junior and senior level executive uh in the city of vadodara only uh dimensions uh, i mean that was the scope of the study but again it can be said that limitation because uh it was not done for the other cities dimension considered may be limited or may be dissimilar according to the type of firm because we, uh, we didn't have any 
any uh, control over the type of the firm of the respondent so maybe that the technological firms and the manufacturing firms may have two different types of uh, uh, requirement of reverse mentoring similar study can be conducted industry wise or in different geographical area as well these are my references and uh, that's all and any question uh, i welcome the question thank, thank you thank so you so much dr mohammed for giving me this opportunity yes, thank you dr sunita sharma for the uh, fruitful presentation uh, really hr uh, you know uh, uh, all of these skills is very important uh, to be required in human resource management we have some questions so we proceed with three questions is that okay yeah Okay. Hello. We have. Do you do you think that this study can be practiced with uh, within employees, um, like the old generation of employees? Hello, Doctor Mohammed. I'm not able to hear you properly. Yeah. Do you think the study can be practiced with employees who are old, the old generation employees? Hello. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that uh, and this study can be practiced within uh, with employees who are old, like all generation employees? Yeah, this uh, study was concerned with the old employees learning from the new generation. So, uh, irrespective of the uh, see the senior means they are age wise also senior and position wise also they were senior and juniors they were age wise also smaller younger. and position wise also they were less than uh, the people who were learning from them okay okay one one more question do you believe uh, ego of senior executive will play an important role in applying reverse mentoring i i didn't get you dr mohammed do you believe that ego of senior executive will play an important role in applying uh, reverse mentoring I, I'm not. I'm not getting. Can you be a little louder? I'm not able to hear you, sir. You okay? Do you believe that ego of senior executive will play an important role in applying reserve monitoring? In applying it. In applying reverse monitoring. I'm. I'm not able to. In applying in what? Your your uh, uh, reverse monitoring. One second. I'll. One minute. I'll connect through my mobile, sir. Give me the mobile. Yeah. Okay. No doubt. Just a minute, Mr. Doctor Mohammed. Yes, yes, no problem. Yeah, I'm connecting. Okay. 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 Hello. Dr. Smith, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Do you believe that ego of senior executives play an important role in applying reverse monitoring? Ego. Ego. Yeah. Yeah. Ebooks. Uh, they uh, they play a very great role. Um, but I'm uh, by this monitoring. Excuse me, Mr. Sinita. You you have an ego. You just because you have you use your mobile. Try to silent to one of you. Maybe laptop. Yeah, I'm, I'm disconnecting. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Still, still, there is an echo. One second. Okay. Ha! Huh, now okay. I can. Hear. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. It's not nice now. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Ah. Uh, yeah. I believe uh, that. Ah. Uh, uh, see, my my study was mostly on the application part. 
so uh, reverse mentoring is uh, you know during pandemic my paper was before the pandemic but during pandemic also i uh, noticed that uh, the youngsters the young employees they were going to their bosses uh, and they were uh, teaching them how to log into the zoom meetings also so these are the technological aspect which the youngers are very very comfortable and uh, i i did not find that people were hesitant in asking for the help from their junior staff previously uh, you know uh, people used to have little arrogance while learning from their juniors nowadays people they don't shy away from uh, learning from their juniors so i just wanted to understand that uh, in india you know the father never wants to learn from the son the boss never wants to learn from the um, Uh, from the sun uh, from the uh, subordinate so uh, so my study was uh, to understand that whether the environment is still like that only or with the entry of the millennials the things have changed or not so uh, my 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 study showed that uh, people are now coming out of uh, their egos and uh, um, they are trying to learn from the juniors not only the technology but also the way of life which uh, um which um, they are they are uh, living and uh, and the, and the workforce diverse diversity you know the inclusive hr also the seniors are now trying to understand uh, uh, their um, their feelings towards uh, sexual orientation and all those things also they are trying to ask and i have seen i'm the, i'm in the group of uh, three hr forums in varodra and gujarat uh, and also on national level i keep on talking with the people that uh, how inclusive hr is doing in their place and uh, they don't hesitate in saying that uh, because of the incoming of the workforce uh, so diverse in orientation and everything um, uh, we are trying to learn from the juniors and juniors are more open than the senior executives you know so, yes absolutely yes absolutely you are right Actually, actually, a lot of questions, but I will just try to review the final question. Which theory supports the variable of the study on reverse monitoring? Hello. Yeah. So, pardon, sir. Again, which theory supports the variables of the study on reverse monitoring? Which theory supports? Is theory why, sir? Theory why? Theory why. Yeah, yeah. Theory Y. Theory X is now slowly moving out from at least India. Uh, people mm-hmm. were very autocratic till now, and uh, they used to feel that the subordinate staff is not uh, ready to work. But now they feel that the the, the subordinate staff is much better than themselves. So we can say that our senior used to tell us that we are not that good. But we are finding that we are not that good as far as our juniors are concerned. so i feel like that our generation is like a sandwich generation you know mm-hmm. so <laughs> so this is how the things are changing very rapidly and during pandemic it has changed from just like day and night you know there was nothing gray shade in between and um, the reverse mentoring has taken place very swiftly during pandemic time also okay thank thank you thank you very much dr thank- sunita sharma for Thank your you. contribution and uh, your Thank answers you, and presentation let us Thank move you. to the fourth presentation of the session i would like to introduce to dr kaisan mamari to share his presentation dr kaisan are you ready dr kais yes yes dr kais could you please start sharing can your you hear me? Uh, yeah can can, can. Okay, Dr. Kais is from uh, Yemen, currently assistant professor at the administrative uh, uh, college of the University of Bahrain in uh, Bahrain Kingdom. He is director of innovation and entrepreneurship center. Dr. Kais has been awarded fellowship uh, from HEA UK. He obtained BBA and PhD from Malaysia. His main research area covers TQM uh, practices, particularly quality management, HRM. Um, uh, psychological behavior and the competitive research mm-hmm. he supervised more than 50 graduate students so, so, so. and uh, uh, excelled in his uh, publication dr kais published more than 20 articles in uh, tqm 
Acharan, uh, etc. He is also managing reviewer of Social Science Journal and Severe Journal and Journal of Science publication regarding TPM, Acharan, and others. He has experience around 13 years in oil uh, companies. Welcome, let us welcome Dr. Faiz Ahmed Al Mamari to the session. You will get uh, Dr. Faiz 10 minutes for the presentation and another five minutes for the session. Uh, we request all uh, the participants to share the questions in the QA and A session. Um, I hope you are ready now to share your uh, start the presentation with the price. Thank okay. you so much, much Dr. Mahmoud. Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you so much, Dr. Mahmoud. Did you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. You can start the talk. Did okay, you right. hear me well? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, my article is talking about the total quality management practices and organization commitment influence on the individual readiness for a change within Yemen oil units. This is the conceptual framework. We have here some of the agenda. We have to be focusing uh, on it, the background of the study and the problem statements and questions uh, and objective of the studies and the hypothesis of the studies and also conceptual framework. And after that, you can take, uh, discuss about the managerial implications and research limitations. Uh, background of the study, as we know this, the many, many of the business organizations is making to commit a worldwide in the 21st century to be due to the globalization and international trades uh, to enhance the promotion technology and growth competitions. And also the change is the very difficult, it's not easy to implement and to success. The change is well known for that individual and organizations face every day. Uh, failed change effort was cost several organizations a great deal of the time, money, and uh, others resource. So there are many of the organizations, they already implement for many of the uh, total quality management, but they are lost and they are failed implement. That's why it will be impact for them to losing time and money and other resource. And also when I read many of the previous studies, I found that many studies has highlighted the high rate of the fear in the change implementation. That means around 90% until 97, there are many of the organizations implement total quality management, but it'll be get failure in the change. There is many of the citations for this. And also there are many of the factors, the most of the significant factors to impact, to enhance, to successful implement, it's the individual readiness for a change. So total quality management practices, as we can call the critical success factor, is the one of the most important factors that influence individual readiness for change. So if any organization needs to implement any new strategies, you have to focus first on the individual readiness for accept, for change. Uh, what's the problem statement in this uh, research? Uh, based on the published evidence on the field change across the global, there are many of the previous studies that we have uh, mentioned about there are huge numbers of the companies will be field change. And also there are many of the studies to high recommended to use total quality management practices and organization commitment on the individual readiness. And no need, uh, need to understand, you have to need to understand the critical success factors in leading global change either in private and public organizations. Uh, there, is, there are lack of the critical success factors, or we can say total quality management practices and organization commitments among Yemen organizations. No have any studies uh, focusing on the Yemeni organizations. Lack of the individual readiness for change among Yemeni organizations. There are also, we have many Sharma and Havar. This is uh, from the Arab countries, uh, researcher. And also there are lack of the studies focusing on these lesson within in the public sectors. So none, none of these studies addressed the relationship between total quality management practices as confused variable. As we know, the total quality management practice, that means there are many of 
the factors under the total quality management. So no have in the previous studies to use group of the factors under total quality management as composed and also organic commitment on individual readiness. So based on what I said before, we have none of above studies has investigated in the least developed countries such as Yemen. Uh, there is two questions based on the questions and also you can create two objectives. The questions of the, my research is, does the total quality management influence individual readiness in Yemen oil units? And the second question is based on the second IVs we have, does employees organization commitment influence individual readiness for change in Yemen oil units? Based on my questions, I create the same numbers of the objectives to examine the influence of total quality management and also organization commitment on the individual readiness for change in Yemen oil companies or units. Uh, based on my numbers of the variables in my conceptual framework, I create also two hypotheses. Uh, they are also two. There is total quality management practice has significant a positive impact on individual readiness at Yemen oil units. And also the organization commitment has significant positive impact on the individual readiness for change at Yemen oil units. This is a hypothesis I created based on my objective and my questions. So if this is symbol of my conceptual framework, uh, as you said, we have two independent variables as total quality management practices. And at the same time, I have organizational uh, commitment. They are influence on my individual readiness for change. Uh, and as I said before, total quality management, there are many of the elements, many of the practices, but I already selected just six. They are the most impact, the, the most uh, significant impact on the individual readiness for change. And also organization commitment, we have three dimensions. Uh, regarding about the third variables is depend variables is talking about the individual readiness for change. This means you have to know about that there is readiness for the individual or for employees to accept any change will be happy in the future or not. Uh, based on my conceptual framework, I, I used two hypotheses. They are explaining the relationship between the variables between them. What's the first variable is called the cart theory. What does it mean this theory? That means uh, before to implement any new strategies, you have to know about uh, there is culture. You have to examine, you have to decrease any resistance bars and let them to know about these new strategies. And then after that, you can move and you can implement. And also we have the another, another in the brain theory is talking about the social exchange. What does it mean? That means we have based on mutual responsibility. I cannot implement if doesn't know what will be get in the future. Let me know about what will be get benefit and then you can implement any strategies you want to do it. So this is my estimated findings because this conceptual framework not have empirical analyze, just we have based on the chair review, based on the theory, based on my context, I said strategic analyze will be approved the proposed hypothesis, and also we have to do independent variables. Absolutely, it will be positively impact on the individual readiness for change. Uh, managerial implications, based on my research, I have the implications based on two, two types, the practicals and also theoreticals. The practicals, that means you have to give the, some advice to increase individual readiness and consequently foster success for change initiative. So at uh, this practical, give the advice, give them some uh, knowledge, how can to increase individual readiness for change and accept any strategy. And also the implications, it should be improve efficiency and productivity for any organizations. And also aware to current state of company. Before to start, before to planning to implement any change, you have to know what is the status of this company. And then you have to be, uh, lead them to ready psychological for the employees, and then you can try to implement this strategy. 
So, and encourage all the stakeholders to participate in decision making and problem solving. And also, we have to prepare on the commitments for the very total quality management to strengthen the feeling of the self efficacy consensusly member will help the companies accomplish global and marketing effectiveness and competitiveness. So, uh, this is the value of articles to providing empirical evidence leading to advancement of knowledge and understand more on the relationship between the TQM practices and organized commitment on individual. And also, this is the first study that empirical examined in the Yemen context and enhanced the contributing to secrets body to let's share, review all the total quality management practices and OC and individual readiness for change and in the particularly in developed countries, not as also developed countries. So my research limitations here, my study focusing on just public sector in the Yemen company and also needs to extend to all of the units or the companies in the public and private of oil sectors. And also you have to focus in this study, but in different country. And I might, this my limitation, I use just one of the methods I advise to another the future researcher to use another uh, research. And also my focus, I'm just focusing on the oil companies, I advise for the next future researcher to focus in the different sector like education, tourism, and so on. Thank you so much for listening. Yes, Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you very much, Dr. Qais and Mamari, for the wonderful presentation. It's really gave us insight into the total quality management practices and organizational commitment influence on the individual readiness. Uh, thanks to our uh, active uh, participants. I would like now to receive some questions. Uh, we received a lot of questions for uh, Q&A. And um, some of, I will just share just three uh, questions and you have uh, five minutes to answer them. Uh, what are the implications of this study? Uh, good question, Dr. Mahmoud. As I said before, the implications, we have two parts. The first one is practical, the second one is theoretical. The practical means uh, my implications, you have to advise some solutions, how can to, to implement to help them, how can to implement total quality management in successful way. Uh, this is for the practical, for the theoretical, I use different variables to impact and to enhance individual readiness for accept any change and will be happened. This is uh, implications. Yeah. Um, there is another uh, question. What are recommendations derived from your research which can be beneficial to the Yemeni oil company? Uh, sorry, Dr. Mahmoud, I cannot hear you well. Can you repeat your what question? What are recommendations? What are the recommendations derived from your research which can be beneficial uh, to the Yemeni oil company? Yeah. Okay, good. Questions, yes. Uh, my recommendations for the oil companies in Yemen, you have to give them the, some courses and give them the aware about the total quality management means. Let them to know what that total quality means and let, and also give him the sub courses and to understand after that, when I say any employees knows about this total quality management, if the implements will be enhanced and productivity will be also get benefit for individual and at the same time for the organization, and then you can implement the total quality management. Generally, what is the future research in this study? In general, not just in uh, oil. The, the future research in the total quality management there is now advanced for the uh, some of the strategies it's called Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma, this is also, it's advanced for the level total quality management. Uh, you have to know, uh, have all the other employees in the organization to know what does mean Lean and Six Sigma. And then also to uh, use many different factors to enhance individual and organization to implement any change strategies. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pais and Mamari. Yeah. Let me invite Thank the you. next presenter Thank of this Thank session. Thank you so much.
Thank you, thank you, Doctor. Let us invite Doctor, uh, the next presenter of the session, Doctor Atul Bansal. Are you with us, Doctor Atul? Are you ready? Yes, Doctor Mahmoud. Yes, Doctor. I'm ready here. Yes. How are you? Okay. Doctor Atul Bansal, Assistant Professor in Accounting. He obtained a DBA in Accounting from South Creek University, USA, 2017. Also obtained his PhD in Accounting from uh, Chuang Dari uh, Charan Sindh University, Meerut, uh, India, 2000. Also, he obtained an MBA in financial management from IG and OU Delhi, uh, India, 2002. He got his master in accounting from Chuang Dari uh, Charan Sindh University, Meerut, India, 1993, uh, uh, commerce accounting. Uh, from uh, Sindh University, Beirut, India, 1992. Moreover, he got bachelor in labor laws and taxation from uh, Chandari uh, Charan Sindh University, Beirut, India, 1996. Dr. Atul has more than 20 years of diversified working experience in teaching, research, and administration in various universities. During these various transitions, he has learned to respect uh, cultural differences and how to collaborate effectively with uh, people from a variety of backgrounds and with many uh, different ideas. Dr. Atul is an associate professor of accounting and a bit uh, in a curriculum development classroom instruction and research activities. Moreover, his job experience has equipped him with a well-rounded skill set, including public speaking and analytical ability, uh, abilities, uh, he excels at going above and beyond to make advancement in the field. His research interest in accounting pra uh, practices in current environment, such as IFRS, forensic accounting, and taxation. His research agenda focus on how to improve secure accounting practices in current accounting practice in corporate sector. Dr. Ratu published uh, more than 30 books in uh, chapter in finance and accounting, 18 books and two under uh, progression. He also published more than 90 research at peer reviewed in international and national journals. Dr. Ratu is a member um, of, at the AIB Academy, International Business Michigan University, USA, and also senior member in IEDRC, International Co uh, Economic Development Research Center, Hong Kong. Also, he is a member in the, the Indian Accounting Association and uh, um, the Indian Commerce Association, India, and the Indian Tourism Congress, ITC, and the Association of India College, uh, College uh, Principal. Okay, world welcome to Dr. Atul Bansal to the session. You will have 10 minutes to present, followed by five minutes for the discussion. Hope you are, the, you are ready to share the screen now. The floor is yours, Dr. Atul. Uh, first of all, I am highly thankful to you, uh, Dr. Azugul, and uh, thanks for your uh, my introduction. I am highly thankful to you. And I am highly thankful uh, to all the organizing committee of this conference, a wonderful conference. And I am really appreciated to be there to be with you again. <laughs> now I am sharing with my uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, welcome, yes, you can start. You have 10 minutes. Okay, go ahead. Doctor. Okay, doctor, actually, uh, just uh, this, uh, the topic of this uh, my research work, actually it's a continuing research work. It's my current area of the research. Basically my search area is accounting. And I have worked in different accounting aspects such as uh, IFRS, forensic accounting, and uh, specialized accounting. Now uh, the human resource accounting is the new area of the study. So I am involving on that and I am also uh, suggesting one new model of uh, uh, human resource accounting because um, uh, you know that uh, accounting some uh, uh, yesterday some uh, person is asking that uh, what is the relation between 
human resource accounting and human resource and accounting but i want to uh, here i want to discuss that accounting is the main source of a business organization you know uh, we are circulating blood to all the organization and uh, we are not as an accountant we are not uh, prepare only business transaction in a uh, proper uh, format of the accounting we are circulating fund we are generating fund and use it effectively all the departments so directly and indirectly accounting and finance department is attaching with all the organization number 1 number 2 hrm and um, is most important thing in a business organization no doubt i am not directly involved with uh, human resource management but i am uh, involving with the accounting in accounting part an accountant is not preparing the business transaction he is preparing the cost efficiency of an organization just we are uh, reducing the cost of the production because if the production cost is higher then automatically the product cost will be higher so my basic concept to reduce the cost and more maximum cost are involved of a product is related to the material and second is labor cost and here the human resource accounting is reducing the cost of the human resource right so my uh, research work actually it's a continuing research work i am not uh, going very uh, deep in this topic but uh, my purpose is just to aware about the uh, how to use the human resource accounting uh, in a business organization and i uh, my topic is human resource accounting a model in practice disclosure of uh, public companies in india actually just i have uh, the sample size or sample companies i have to take in uh, sample size i have to take in the indian companies uh, it is uh, uh, there are you listening me yes yes doctor we can hear you okay 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 absolutely. can you just make the screen full yeah you make uh, full screen yeah. there is some problem of internet uh, so that's why a uh, little bit uh, <laughs> is there anyway uh, yeah, so <laughs> so disclosure of public companies of india i have to take a lot of uh, uh, big corporate houses because this model we cannot use in a small companies we have to use this uh, concept in a bigger companies you know uh, um, just if we are uh, anyway uh, what is the abstract of the uh, human resource accounting has a very high significance to help the management in better utilization better utilization means and planning management of human resource in an organization better utilization means uh, my um, basic concept to make this model we have to in general what happened in a business organization when we have to recruiting the people just we have to search that the qualification of the employee and secondly what is the experience of the employee and accordingly we have to recruit the people but what is the performance if you have to a sample size of the three per, uh, person and all three persons have the similar qualification and similar experience what do you think all three per persons will uh, the productivity of all three persons are same no it is not same someone is uh, giving good uh, responsibility towards the organization but some are not because qualification and experience is not uh, carrying the performance so my model is related to performance based um, accounting performance based accounting of the human resource accounting so uh, if the performance is involving with the recruitment or the salaries or the benefits so it is better so uh, what we have to do we have to provide the better utilization of the uh, manpower and secondly planning management of human resources of the organization means we have to plan <coughs> properly 
of the human resource in an organization because uh, if you are more productivity so we have to make the um, decision making group and if your your uh, productivity is lesser than then you have to manage your level so there are different aspects where we have to make this model anyway the objective of the study is to understand how human assets can be given monetary value because every uh, in my uh, uh, um, research work every person in an organization is not a person is not a employee he is the asset of the company if we have to consider one person as a asset of the company it will be more fruitful more beneficial for the organization if the dump asset is there and progressive asset is there if progressive asset is there then it is uh, beneficial for the business organization so everybody want to be on that state so uh, to understand how human asset can be given monetary value and how it helps in uh, the managerial decision making to provide the different models that can be used the valuation of the human capital for better understanding of this subject what our i am suggesting here in my uh, research paper uh i i don't think uh, oh, anyway uh, definitions of the human resource accounting it's a uh, theoretical aspect which is i have to take in in, in the different uh, reviews literatures Uh, where it is uh, the mention that the process of identifying measuring and communicating communicating information about human resource in order to facilitate effective management within the organization how to uh, use effectively so uh, my basic concept is related to uh, how effectively we have to use the human resource of an organization now what is the objective of human resource accounting it is uh, very important for to understand uh, of my uh, research paper number 1 to furnish human resource cost and value information making management decision about the acquiring this is the most important thing acquiring allocating developing and maintaining human resources in order to attain cost effective organization organizational objective means cost effective as i told you uh, at the beginning of that uh, the presentation that cost effective means whatever we have to recruit one manager and uh, he has a good qualification he has a good uh, experience but his decision making power is very poor so he is useful for the organization no we cannot use him so that's why we have to search this type of people and we have to use effectively in an organization number 2 the allow managerial personnel to monitor effectively managerial personnel uh, all the uh, effectively um, uh, we can monitor according to their uh, effective working in an organization to provide determination of the asset control because i told you that uh, the main power in an organization is a asset not an um, uh, next thing is aid in the development of managerial principles and have the uh, personal uh, interesting to the organization to know whether the human resource are producing in a return equivalent in their worth or not so these are the uh, theoretical aspects which we have to uh, carry forward in my uh, research work and uh, there are lot of uh, planning and control and uh, lot of things which uh, we are using in this uh, topic just like role of human resource accounting in functional of human resource management process just like acquisition of the human resources what will be the uh, acquisition uh, part what is the development part what is the allocation of human resources uh, conservation of the human resources use utilization and evaluation and rewards because as per the performance we have to provide then uh, the rewards to the employee so uh, these are some concepts 
And here I want to mention here, uh, <clears throat> these are some uh, steps what, what we have to use uh, in a human resource accounting. But uh, my basic concept is the model of human resource accounting. Actually, what I am going to suggest that uh, the models of human resource accounting are uh, basically three models are there. Number one is monetary model. Number two is non-monetary model. And third is statistical based methods. Monetary variables called monetary models. Non-monetary non -monetary means related to behavioral uh, variables. And statistical uh, related to their past performance and future performance. So last that we have to uh, state the statistical based methods which we have to use in the uh, human resource accounting. So just like first is uh, monetary models are um, based on the cost based models means how much effective means uh, if we have to recruit one person and how much he is effective for the business organization means how much we have to pay the salaries to the employee. So there are uh, different aspects related to which is already specified in the uh, research, already uh, research. But uh, my research is a little bit more advanced and more uh, effective so that uh, performance based model, models, uh, this model I, I am going to prepare in my research work, which is continuing. Historical cost method means uh, when we have to, uh, what is the actual cost incurred in recruiting, selecting, hiring, training, development of human resource. These are uh, different uh, models which is to be provided by the different pupils. Replacement cost approach, approach uh, opportunity cost approach, standard cost approach, uh, these are different uh, models which are to be based, value-based models, present value approaches, present value future earning models, and rewarding valuation mod models, aggregated payment approaches. Second aspect is non-monetary model. It is behavioral model. This is the behavioral model. Means uh, there are uh, two, three things. Number one, casual variables. In behavioral, casual, uh, casual uh, variables, interventing variables, and end result variables means uh, what, uh, how the improve the moral of the employee. So it is to be specified in this uh, chart. Just like uh, uh, three things are there: casual variable, interventing variables, and end result variables. Casual variables. Managerial behavior, managerial behavior means if we have to um, behave with our employees is very rude. So his productivity will be down. If we are very uh, high and we are respecting to our subordinates, then automatically his attitude towards the organization is higher. So this is based on the organizational structure and subordinate Peer behavior is next step is interventing variables, perception, communication, and motivation. Just like I told you that motivation is most important thing in a uh, business organization as a um, human resource employee, everybody knows very well. So uh, this thing we have to use in the performance based, right? Finally, the uh, health, and satisfaction, re final uh, result of that uh, um, things are there, productivity and financial performance will be higher if the employee morale is the, or employee behavior will be higher. Next is a statistical based, a statistical based means we have to uh, check the statistics for the past month statistics. Uh, previous statistics, recruitment cost, selecting cost, what is the selecting cost we have to uh, um, investing on the employee and what will be the reward of the employee. Like that, uh, this is a statistical based key in 2017, 18, how much we have to spend, 18, 19, how much we have to spend. Like that, we have to make some statistical 
method. Here, I have- Yeah, yeah, Dr. Atul, just, in, uh, could you please just try to finalize in two minutes? Yes, yes, Doctor, I'm, I'm finalizing it. Now, yes, um, research work, which I am continuously involving with the uh, different Indian companies, just like uh, BATL, it's a big uh, organization uh, related to electrical products. We have to collect some data related to the human resource accounting, and we have to use that data with comparative analytical study with different organization because every organization have different aspects related to accounting, human resource accounting. Just like another is Steel Authority of India is there, Infosys is there. So some companies are there, there are the statistical records are given here. So we have to analytical study of these things. Now, finally, uh, the human resource are the ener <clears throat> energies, skills, talent, knowledge of the people, which are potentially can be applied to the product of the goods and branding services, such as investment in the human resource refers to all formal investment directed to raise knowledge, skills, and aptitude of the, an organizational workforce. So uh, this is the uh, conclusion, but I'm not, uh, actually my studies are continuing on this topic. So I am not suggesting that the limitation, I, uh, it is continuing process. So uh, it is, uh, my research work is continuing. So uh, limitation is just like uh, this concept, human resource accounting concept in general, we, are, we can use in a big houses, big organization, not in a small organization. This is the uh, limitation of the company, uh, of the accounting. This is uh, some references which I have to suggest it over here. Uh, I hope that uh, it is sufficient, but uh, uh, very soon I will come with my uh, complete concrete of uh, performance-based model. Right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Atul, for the informative presentation. It is important to share the practicing uh, model in HR accounting at public companies in uh, India. I would like to share a few questions with you uh, received from the participants. Shall we proceed, Dr. Yeah, yeah, please proceed. Okay. So uh, we have very important question. It is, is it possible to carry out full HR accounting? For developing before developing a general uh, accept of uh, accounting the principle of capturing HR assets. Yes, exactly, doctor. Actually, it is already uh, studied, which I have to specify in my topic. And uh, this topic is uh, we have to assess the employees as an asset of an organization. Then accordingly, we have to. Uh, check that sample that how much effective this asset, not uh, a person, means suppose uh, three employees we have to recruit, so three assets of the company. Now, we uh, some assets are uh, performing and some uh, assets are not performing. So those who are performing, we have to appreciate that uh, concept. And those who are not, uh, those who are less performing, so accordingly we have to assess that performance and use in uh, the organizational uh, planning and control. Yes, doctor. Yeah, okay, great. Another question, which if the three methods, financial, non-financial, and statistical, uh, statistical, do you believe will yield the best information for the users? Yes, actually, uh, as far as concern of the human resource accounting, it's a new aspect of the study and learning also. And these three things are very, very important because uh, there are uh, three things, uh, financial uh, model, uh, which is related to the cost base, okay, how much cost we have to pay to the employee and how much is uh, returning, right? Secondly, right. uh, then according to their performance, we are paying to the employee or not. If you, uh, your uh, performance is very high and you are getting very less, what happened? You, uh, your uh, uh, interest towards the organization will become less. 
if your performance is higher so automatically uh, and uh, the organization is paying you well or paying you higher so automatically your morale will be boost so uh, all three uh, uh, models are used in a uh, generally organizations just like uh, i have sampled with the infosys and uh, uh, sale or in um, dhl so all organization are using all three uh, models in their organization and it okay, is a booming, booming booming concept in a business organization and they are yes. using it they are using it yes, great, great. one one more thing one more question how does yes. hr accounting add value to organizational performance automatically really actually a employee is uh, as i told you before automatically if you are boosting or uh, motivation Uh, given to our employee automatically his performance will improve day by day right so uh, it is better to for the uh, development but there is the constant if our employee those who are not result oriented qualification and experience is too high but they are not result oriented what happened they are not they will not be a asset of the organization they will be the liability of the organization are you understanding doctor yes so, yes yes so that's why we have to uh, push up the assets of the organization not liabilities yeah it is it's really very interesting uh, to hear you doctor uh, atul can i have just one last question since yes, you yes, are please. talking about uh, you are implement uh, continuing this research in the government okay do you think that it will be much uh, differences if it is implemented in private companies in india oh, it is it is applicable in private companies in india not in india uh, this is the conceptual uh, concept everything okay. it is not uh, constant for the india it is constant for all over the world if the model is successful and the performance comes through the results so automatically it is applicable over all over the world actually just uh, we have to take the sample of indian company but uh, same thing because it is a concept it is the model and that model we can use in any organization not in indian organization right it is applicable in all over the world so if it is uh, beneficial for the organization automatically <coughs> every organization can use that uh, model okay thank you thank you very much uh, dr ratul pansal for informative presentation thank you um, very much it is very important to share with us um, practice and modern hr uh, accounting in public companies in india it's really very great from you um, now we have, we will um, uh, thanks uh, dr um, atul it's really great from you to share with us uh, this is ongoing research hopefully also in the next conference we will uh, have um, uh, imperative you know research or shall we also now move to uh, we have finished the last session of the first icchr i would like to invite prof julian to declare the recommendations of the conference and launching the second uh, international conference on human resource management prof julian are you with us can you hear us I am with you um it Peter can't stop I can't start my video yet. Yeah okay. Uh, Just try to share your screen in a while. The floor is yours Dr. Julia. Hello everybody. Uh nice to see you. Give me a moment. Yes. Let's take a break. Ah. Oh. I find my screen. Please just in, in in between until Dr. Julian share the uh, full screen. Uh, please, uh, dear attendees, observers, please do not hesitate to uh, fill up the survey, and um, uh, in order to get the EAE certificate, it's very important to get your feedback and your name and uh, your email address. Uh, Dr. Uh, Julian, you ready? Can you see my screen? Yes, it's shared. You can make it. It's shared. Right That's. Now. that's the main thing so there we have it all right i'm ready to go well uh thank you everybody it sounds so it's a very exciting 
and very interesting um, conference and are highly successful. So congratulations to the organizers and for everyone that uh, took part in this first international conference on human resource management uh, organized by the Gulf University. I'm uh, glad to see that uh, throughout the conference, there's a strong debate on each subject. And um, in line with my uh, earlier um, suggestions and proposals, uh, I'm glad to see the breadth of interdisciplinary research as well. And also that um, some of you are already considering some of the issues I raised in the first session. Now, give me a moment because uh, I don't want to go over time as I did last time. So, and please stop me if, if I do. Now, so these are the recommendations from this um, conference. First, to encourage greatest focus on the impact of AI and automation in HR on organizational effectiveness to deliver first class services and innovative products. So that is a very big agenda and a great leap forward. Uh, AI and the inevitability of AI in organizations and the impact on people and managing people is essential. Second, to engage in more multidisciplinary research to establish an empirical model of green HRM and organizational sustainability exactly in line with my proposal about thinking about well-being uh, and what it means to exercise control or high commitment approaches, but even broader to sustainability and organizational sustainability. Profit is one thing. Uh, finance is uh, certainly uh, in, in important, but sustainability in today's society and globally cannot be ignored. So this is another critical uh, topic and I'm glad to see it as a second recommendation. Third, to investigate the role of managerial accounting in developing and implementing human resources strategy and measuring its effectiveness. So again, multi, uh, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary research is important here and considering the resource, the human as a resource in this way, may in fact persuade many other managers of the importance of people in the workplace. Fourth, to undertake a comparative analysis of the training uh, practices and approaches of HRM managers in domestic and multinational enterprises. And as I mentioned at the outset of the conference yesterday, uh, this will be extremely challenging. Even if you just focus on domestic practice, the variation in domestic practice, the identification of good practice, and then implementing that in an organization is extremely challenging, and even more so at the multinational enterprise. Regardless of how challenging this is, lessons can still be learned and uh, attempts to implement of uh, implementation is essential. So even when I've visited the Gulf and uh, in the past, I've learned so much to bring back to Cardiff, even in this, uh, you know, on a more local uh, level, and that has been uh, implemented or beginning to be implemented here. So this is really important. Learning, reflecting all the time is essential. Fifth, to create an effective model of employee engagement now that's in person and remotely, to reduce the negative consequences of unpredictable crises. I do believe with the current pandemic, uh, we are now going to be uh, looking at the future very, very differently. And because of that, we must think of ways to handle uh, unpredictable crises. And crises that have such a grip on us all, what is what are the steps that we can take to get us through crises and to retain employee engagement when we are not in person? So that is really quite something. So very contemporary and uh, an, another essential move forward. Sixth, to encourage more comparative analysis 
of monetary and non-monetary models when evaluating human capital, again, tying in with our earlier point uh, about the importance of humans as capital and viewing them in that way uh, could provide some uh, persuasive power so for those who, who already appreciate the value of uh, workers. And finally then, adapting new pedagogies for teaching HRM in the context of social change to facilitate transformation uh, HRM. And I think this is an essential point again. Teaching HRM is not easy and we have to constantly review, as I have done over the last 18 to 20 years of uh, teaching, um, so that students become engaged. And we need to find these hooks on which students can build their learning experiences and really be attentive to the information that we are presenting them. So this is a, a, an outcome of the conference that I certainly wasn't expecting to see, but I'm delighted that we, we have considered this too. So overall, I think the conference has been broad uh, with some very good specialization uh, topics discussed and some uh, papers, some lots of good questions. I'm sorry I couldn't share in the conference fully, uh, but it's been, you know, it's been great just catching up uh, now as well. So I'm delighted now to launch the second International Conference on Human Resource Management, November 2022. Uh, so that uh, is two years uh, from now. And there's the topics that will be covered then and the trends, but it's not limited to, of course, is the artificial intelligence in HRM. We'll see how what progress in research has been made there. Working remotely, will we still be working remotely? The impact of working remotely on the workplace and people and employees, HR crisis management, ethical and legal issues in HRM and diversity at workplace. Diversity and I would suggest inclusion at the workplace too because diversity is challenging when you have a diverse workforce, then inclusion is challenging. And I do believe they'll go together. So please, we have some very exciting things to discuss in two years time. And that is it. May I just express a big thank you to everyone that's participated and shared in this conference and organized it too. Very well done to all. And it's been great uh, to be, have a, a small part myself. Thank you from Cardiff in Wales. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Julian, for your uh, contribution. We are really glad that to host you and also to um, give this powerful you know, feedback and uh, recommendations. It's really great. And um, thank you for that. And this is also a great opportunity that we used to know uh, from the diversity uh, culture and diversity research and multidisciplinary research, it is very important to be gathered again with the Gulf University. Thank you a lot and see you in uh, two years. It's really a great time and thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Mohammed, Mohammed, close session. Excuse me, Dustin Mohammed.